Today we're going to continue building out the UI of our app and we're going to look at dates and times and drop down lists. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green. And I'm your presenter, Paul Sheriff. And we are continuing on in our 18 part series on building apps with XAML and Maui. And as you may have noticed, Leslie is not with us. She's unable to make the second half of the recordings. So it will just be me and Paul. But since Paul's the guest, we promise it'll be just as exciting. <laughs> so previously, uh, we looked at switches and radio buttons. And today we're going to continue building out the UI of our app. And we're going to look at dates and times and drop down lists. That's right. Very cool stuff. Should be pretty fun. So, so what we'll do is we'll switch over to the screen here. And we're on our user information screen. We're going to keep adding to this screen here. I'm going to add one more additional row. And then we're going to go down here to the bottom like we've been doing. We're just going to insert some areas here. So I'm going to change these two rows here. So we're going to scoosh those down. And then we're going to add another label. And we're going to add what's called a date picker. Mm -hmm. So the date picker, as you kind of expect, is one that looks like just a regular calendar that will pop up on the screen. Now this is on Windows. So if you you know bring this up on your Android or your iPhone, it's probably gonna look a little different, right? It might have those little things just scroll through to figure out date and then the uh, you know the day, the date, and then the, the year. So it might look a little bit different depending on the operating system that you're running on. Yeah, because we kind of didn't we didn't talk about the architecture of how all this works, but Basically, you write, so just as you write HTML, and it is nothing more than the instructions on the renderer, some rendering engine on how to draw a page, XAML is essentially the same thing. And when you build the application um, behind the scenes, Visual Studio is building a native Windows app, a native Android app, a native iOS or Mac OS app. And so you're going to get the native control. So there will be differences. You just write the XAML once, and then sometimes you got to wait and see what it looks like on the actual platforms, and then you may have to adjust as needed. Right. So basically, they're just taking that XAML, translating it to whatever the real code is that will actually run on iOS or Android or whatever. Yeah. Yep. So, all right. But this is kind of nice. You know, we have a little uh, date picker here, so you can choose a date, and then, you know, of course, it updates the screen, and then in a little bit here, we're going to talk about actually doing the binding back to a, an object. Mm. All right, so there's a date picker. Let's now go up and add yet another row. So all I'm doing is just changing those row, that row definitions attribute, and I'm just adding on an additional row, and most of them are going to be auto. All right, if you have a list, which we'll talk about later in this uh, series, we'll probably start using the asterisk to say take up the most room for that particular list. But for now, we're just gonna stick with the auto. So by adding another one, that means down here, I'm gonna be able to insert right after the birth date here, a time picker. And then of course, I'm gonna increase these rows here by one. And now this actually does look very similar to what you might see on iOS or Android Mm -hmm. this little time guy here, right? So you can choose from the different columns here. You can move up and down and you can choose AM and PM and you can just choose whatever time that you want. You click on the little uh, check mark there and that says accept it. Otherwise, if you've made changes and everything, you canceled it, it just stays where it was. Mm -hmm. All right, so time picker, we have date picker. And then I'm sure a lot of you have been doing development for quite a while. And so we always have some sort of drop down list where we want the user to be able to choose values. So we want to give them a list of values and they're going to choose one. So again, I'm going to go back up here and go to auto. And once again, we're just going to increase everything down here. We'll change this one to 11, this one to 12. Like I said, I really hope in the next version, they're going to give us a little more help on that. <laughs> so, 
All right, so what I'm doing in this one is I'm adding a label that you can see here on lines 103 and 104. And then I'm using the flex layout again. So I wanted the ability to have an entry area and then a picker. Mm -hmm. okay. So now the picker, you'll notice that I'm getting these squigglies here. And the reason why is when you add a picker and it's got this hard coded array, you must stop and restart in order for that to take okay. effect. So if that ever happens to you, you're gonna, if you see those little squigglies, you just gotta restart. So that squiggly is just a hot reload thing. It's nothing wrong with your code. You got it. Got it. Yeah, so if you're, you're dynamically adding things, you're getting squiggles and you know that that code is correct, <laughs> it probably just means you gotta do a, you know, a, it, yeah. a hot reload isn't gonna be able to reload that guy. So you're gonna have to restart. And then a few episodes ago, you had talked about the difference between just writing the straight XAML and using the properties window. So is this a perfect example of when instead of doing picker.item source, X array type equal, and then wrapping all the values and strings that you could do that more easily with the properties window? You know, I haven't tried that one. That's a really good question. Let's actually go here. Let's bring up the properties window. I always just write the, actually, I, I never write hard coded stuff like this. <laughs> um, I mean, but if you were doing a prototype or something, you might want to do something like this, right? So what you're asking really is, could you come in here and actually go into the items and add something? So I'm, I'm sure you can. Uh, let's see if we do an add here. Yep, nope. See, it doesn't work on the items. Okay. Interesting. It might on the item source. Let's see. Okay, so let's see here. Well, I've not seen any direct way to do it here. It's just given me an okay. object, and the object itself isn't really going to work for us because we need this array. Okay. Yeah, good good question, though, and that, that would be normally something that I think you could do. Um, I've typically used it like in WPF when I was building uh, menu items and things like that. I found it pretty helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but tell you the truth, I don't really use it a lot. Okay. <laughs> Pretty much stick in the XAML, which is, I think, what you do, too. <laughs> sure, but that's what we grew up uh, doing. So. That's right. Did we ever grow up, Robert? Come on. No, that's okay. what we've spent our careers doing. Let's put it <laughs> there we go. That's, that's a better Good way. Good point. <laughs> All right. So let's go back here. And so what I wanted was I wanted this ability to have an entry screen, entry area here. And so I could type in a phone number, for instance. And then I wanted a drop down so the user could choose, hey, what kind of, you know, phone number is this, right? So is it mobile? Is it home? Is it other? And you'd mm -hmm. see those values here now being represented here in this picker or drop down list. Right. Yeah. So, and the reason I use a flex layout is I didn't want to use, I didn't want to have to have the grid three columns. I think I mentioned this before. I find it better if you stick with just two columns for entry screens. If you have more than, you know, two things that you need, go to this flex layout because then if, if for some reason it needs to, you know, wrap, and I don't think I actually put the wrap in here on this one. So we do wrap like so, okay. And then let's see, direction would be row. And that way it could push this underneath. I think that's another one of those I got to restart. But you get the idea. Okay. okay. So anytime you have more than one thing in that second column, use the flex layout and that's going to give you the most flexibility. And so, so basically if you narrow the screen, then instead of being off the screen and not visible, that picker would just flip right. down below the Correct. actual phone number. Okay. Just like these check boxes did up here. If you remember, <laughs> right. those were also wrapped within the flex layout. You can okay. see here. Yeah. So I think the wrap and the direction, I think that has to be a restart on that, or it could even mm -hmm. just be a hot reload. Uh, I think it's a, a restart type of situation. So you just want to, you know, make sure you're always putting that in. If, if that's something that you need. I personally, like I said, never go beyond two. So that I, I do use this flex layout quite a bit. So, all right, let's try this out. This should actually give us what we're looking for here. Oops, there we go. Yeah, let's see, mobile one. Oh, 
Look at that. Oh, oh, you know what? It can only go so far. See, look at this. It's on the same here. Okay. So which means that it's determining that the minimum width is you're fine, basically. Because that, that I mean, there's no way your phone's going to be less than about like that. Okay. Right. So so in this particular case, it didn't need it, which is great. But you could see, let's say if we added a little bit more room to this, right? I did a minimum request here. You know, if I if I move this out a little bit, maybe it will cause it to wrap. And for some reason, boy, it's just not wanting to, is it? <laughs> so, well, I, I right. you know, I think it's just one of those things where it's determining that, hey, you know what, we're fine, but yep. we'd again have to check with that. And well, main thing, you try it on your Android or your iOS and make sure. So, right. Cool. All right, great. So there we go. Date pickers, time pickers, and those uh, uh, drop down lists, which is just simply called a picker. Excellent. And then, of course, they they come with all kinds of properties, so you can set default values, and you can. Presume. That's correct. Absolutely. So <laughs> you can see on the time I did re I did set the default time here to yeah. six a.m. Yep. You know, you can do the same thing on the date picker. You can set the date property. And, and then maximum date, minimum date, etc. Oh yeah. So yeah. if you're doing uh, some type of thing where you can only enter a date that's a week from today, you can set the minimum date to today plus seven, etc. You got cool. it. Well, and again, done. let's say you wanted to do something a little more dynamic. You don't want a hard coded date in here or hard coded mm -hmm. minimum and maximum date, right? That's one of those times when you would name this control. Yep. You know the date. <laughs> Or whatever, yes. yeah. Because then, in the back, you know, in your code behind, you can actually use C sharp to say yep. the date dot date equals date time dot now, for instance. Right. You know, and minimum date could be you know today's date, and maximum date could be plus you know thirty days or something. Sure. So cool. Yeah. So anytime that you need to find yourself going to write some code to dynamically set things. Like maybe you want the time, you don't want to default it to 6 a.m. You want it to whatever the time is right now or the nearest hour to that. Right. Again, give it a name and then in the code behind, which we're going to talk about a little bit more code behind here coming up. Mm -hmm. That's where you would then be able to set those particular values. Excellent. Yep. All right. Good. So what's in our next episode? Oh, so coming up next, we're going to actually start talking about data binding, which will be great. Um, we're going to... Kind of got a couple of uh, versions of data binding we're going to look at. The first one is actually going to be just kind of binding controls to controls. So like on the screen, you want this control to affect how this control works. We'll talk about that. And then we're going to talk about creating C-sharp objects and binding those to our UI. Cool. Can't wait. All right. All right. So thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.